Hey, what's up? It's Ken again, back again with some more Warhammer. Today we are going to be reacting to something I said I wasn't going to react to. I literally made a whole video on it and why. Of people who sit on their ass and wonder why they don't have the things they want. Like now, one, what one would I be reacting to? Him? Up. What am I actually reacting to? Am I reacting to the information that he's giving out on him as a YouTuber? Do you see what I'm saying? I don't react to other YouTubers. But either documentaries, um, commentary, something narrated. But out of respect for another YouTuber, I'm not going to react to his stuff because I'm reacting to him. He's all in his videos. It's basically me watching him. Today, we're going to be reacting to Ricky. Now, I said I was never going to react to one of Bricky's videos because I just think it's weird. I mean, when I see other people react to it, it either is in this kind of format. I like his Imperium of Man pants. Yeah, the they're great, Imperium. great pants. Yeah. Or people who really don't know how to edit their videos, they look like this. I'm gonna try my best to react to Ricky's videos and not make it seem awkward, not make it seem like I'm just in the corner watching Ricky teach a Zoom class. Either in Google Classroom or in uh, an email. So turn your notifications on for Google Classroom. Oh, look, what's going on there, Jenny? Kevin. Kevin. Oh my God. Anyway, this is going to be a multiple part video because I'm not going to react to the whole 50 minutes of this one and this one is only part one. So anyway, let's get into every single Warhammer faction explained by Bricky part one. If you want to support the channel, please hit the like button and think about subscribing. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right. As someone who doesn't necessarily serve the Omnissiah, but someone who can appreciate oh, them, you will not be getting my legs today, as I'll be replacing them with various things depending on which faction we are currently talking about to add a little bit more context and possible comedy to whatever the hell I am currently doing. So, hello everybody, my name is Bricky, and this is going to be a long video and a large project that has been going on for quite some time. This is... I need two hands for this. This is every single Warhammer 40k race in kind of a nutshell, explained, a little bit of explanation, a little bit of lore, a little bit of talking about the tabletop, but mostly lore, what they're all about, and also a little bit of background for those of you who just have no clue what Warhammer 40,000 is. Now you see, Warhammer and Warhammer 40,000 is a universe people hear plenty of, but don't know a whole lot about. They see, oh, there's these dudes in big power armor with chainsaw swords, and they got these big old green orcs, and there's some bugs over there, and everyone calls these guys weebs, and then there's these spiky bitches over here, and I, I don't get it. I don't understand. Where do I start? Well, this video is particularly for you, or for those of you who have a little bit of knowledge, but you're kind of curious about each of the different races and factions in Warhammer. So, overall, the Warhammer universe is vast when it comes to lore and background and each different faction is so different with the things that they believe in and some are human some are transhuman like where they all have all these crazy ass electronics on them you've got aliens and you've got the chaos factions and there's so much to entail that i decided to embark on this project to tell you what each and every single one of them is about and what the warhammer universe is about as well to give at least a little bit of an intro to this extremely bloated, but very, very enjoyable world that I and many others partake in. So, I will be explaining every single faction in the Warhammer 40k universe, at least all the factions you can play as, and some smaller factions here and there. I will not be discussing absolutely everything in it because that is a little bit much and I'm not going to go too mega deep into the lore. I'm going to give you a pretty solid overview of each of the different factions and have you learn a little bit about them and we'll discuss a little bit of the tabletop as well in case you are curious about that. But for this episode entirely, we are discussing the Imperium of Man because that takes up a fat chunk of Warhammer lore. Oh, boo -hoo. What is Warhammer 40,000? 
Well, the 40,000 starts off is the year 40,000. The See, I find it kind of hard to uh, react to him because it's kind of like I'm in a classroom or the teacher is on a Zoom call. It's like I feel like if I stop or interrupt in any kind of way, I'm going to miss something. It's not really, um, you know, something to react to. It's something to learn to. And I explain that in like some of the comments when people are like, you should react to Bricky. I'm like, hey, look, if I want to learn something, I'll like uh watch a bricky video and i do in my spare time i know about them but i'm finding it hard to actually you know react to anything because it's just knowledge it's not like you know an experience where okay what do you think about it it's like no i should be taking notes not telling you what i think about it 41st millennium that's where it takes place is in the year 40,000, 41,000 a.d you're already more knowledgeable. Let me read you a quote, first of many quotes in this video. It is the 41st millennium. For more than a hundred years, the emperor has sat immobile on the golden throne of earth. He is the master of mankind by the will of the gods and master of a million worlds by the might of his inexhaustible armies. He is a rotting carcass, writhing invisibly with power from the dark age of technology. He is the carrion lord of the Imperium, for whom a thousand souls are sacrificed every day so that he may never truly die. To be a man in such times is to be amongst untold billions. It is to live in the cruelest and most bloody regime imaginable. These are the tales of those times. Forget the power of technology and science, for so much has been forgotten, never to be relearned. Forget the promise of progress and understanding, for in the grim, dark future, there is only war. There is no peace amongst the stars, only an eternity of carnage and slaughter and the laughter of thirsting gods. Everything blows. And it blows fucking hard. Warhammer is probably the most dark and depressing universes ever in fiction. Or at least like, like top three. Everything is so absurdly horrible, destructive, or overpowered that it all kind of ends up canceling itself out. It's like Dota. War rages across the galaxy. Interstellar travel is only possible due to sacrificing a thousand souls a day to a rotting carcass of a man who you believe to be your god. Demonic gods and just demons. Okay, I can react to that because why do they sacrifice a thousand souls? Why don't they say a thousand people? Because a thousand souls, um, how do you harvest souls? Anyway, let's uh, take the soul part out of it and ask, what are they harvesting from these souls? Is it the blood? Is it something in the blood? Is it metachlorians? Possibly. I don't know. If you know the answer, then let me know in the comments. Um, I think I'm going to try to make a whole video on that within itself. And tear open the fabric of reality on a whim. Other Xenos or even other humans end up each other in Hold untold on, is this Galactus right across here? the galaxy. It is a time of unending look like Galactus. war, slaughter, and a bloodbath amongst everybody. Planets are deemed unrecoverable and are completely destroyed on a whim. Everything sucks, but that's like the charm of it. See, everything in Warhammer is evil, but being evil is kind of fun. Like humanity in its own right is a xenophobic, prejudiced, and religious zealot group that kill each other just as much as they kill all of their enemies. But, and they're like mid, mid to high tier evil on the evil scale hold on let's pause that evil scale my roles what's he talking about that guy who is he talking about tau players imperium of man eldar orcs tyranin tyranin sorry playing lower tier for fun playing by intent guys who bring food oh okay yeah, evil tear. We gotta find out who my roles in that guy are. Of Warhammer? Nobody is good. 
No matter who you are, everyone is some flavor, some color of evil. Whoever you pick, you are going to be the bad guy. But that's the fun of it. Because being the bad guy is badass. Villains are cool. They look cool, they got cool outfits, they got cool weapons, they got cool armies. Villains are cool, man. And when everyone is a villain, there he goes, there's Galactus cool. again. And by the way, I want to say, um, it's not that you're playing the bad guy, you have to defeat your enemy. Right, that's in any game. That's even in chess. You're going to be the bad guy because your job is to, you know, crush the other kingdom or whatever. The king, queen, the bishop and all of that. It, I mean, that's just the way games are played. Someone has to be the winner and someone has to cry. Let's move on. That's what makes this so charming is that everyone can be the bad guy. So let's start off talking about the main bad guy, quote unquote, the Imperium of Man. His hair, whack. His gear, whack. The Imperium of Man is the main empire of the human race. All of humanity is under this one flag called the Imperium. And about 10,000 years ago, there was a man. He was the emperor, the emperor of mankind, a 10 foot tall psychic demigod who led humanity across the stars to colonize tons and tons of worlds, create superhuman soldiers, and really bring humanity into a new age. This man, the Emperor of Mankind, was a Psyker. A Psyker is like a magician of sorts. In the world of 40k, there is the Warp, the Immaterium, kind of like hell, but sort of like a purgatory dimension. Hold on. He said something. He, he said the Emperor of Mankind was a demigod. From my knowledge, he was made by a group of shamans thousands of years ago. Like, um, all of them took their essence and combined it into one being. I really wouldn't call that a demigod. Um, as far as I could tell, a demigod is half man, half God, made by a God, something like that. So I wouldn't say he's a demigod. Um, but if he's talking about a light one, okay, I'll give him that. Mention of hell. And a psyker is someone who can take that power and manifest it through their mind to use it to do stuff. Well, like witchcraft stuff, magician stuff, spells, and lots of other things, but we don't want to get too into that. The Emperor, big boy psyker. Top tier, A plus, maybe even S. Now the Emperor created a bunch of sons. Yes, created a bunch of sons known as the Primarchs. He created 20, 18, 18 Primarchs <laughs> to have them lead all of the different legions of humanity to the oh, different never stars seen it in color and like that. to help colonize and bring it out. These Primarchs are basically like little versions of the Emperor. Not all of them are psychers, but a lot of them are very, very powerful, and they lead his special Space Marine legions. Then this big clusterfuck happened called the Horus Heresy, where the Emperor's favorite son, the Primarch, Horus, ended up joining Chaos and leading nine other, well, I guess eight, nine of the 18, half, half of his Primarchs directly to Earth to fight down the Emperor. Hold on, he skipped over them being spread across the universe and raised on different planets by different people that they call father and mother, different environments, different upbringings, different religions. And he and the emperor had to go search for him and bring him home. Yeah, he pretty much skipped over all of that. I mean, this Horus heresy happened and what years and years and years after all of that happened. So that was a big chunk he missed. Himself. Now, if you want to know what chaos is, remember what I mentioned earlier, the warp, that immaterium, the hellish place? In there relies the four chaos gods. Imagine like Satan and three other Satans. The warp being kind of evil, those chaos gods, that's the reason. <laughs> three and other so Satans. those chaos gods manipulated Horus, and then Horus helped manipulate all eight other Primarchs to lead this giant coup directly on the Emperor on Earth. And they fucked up shit. After this huge civil war, Horus died, but not before brutally wounding the Emperor. And right at the end of his life, they put the Emperor on this large golden throne on Earth in which he is now alive, just barely, but slowly rotting away, powering something called the Astronomicon, so long as he stays alive and is fed 
a thousand people a day. The Astronomicon is like the North Star. If you want to do interstellar travel in 40k, you need to pass through that demonic warp I mentioned earlier. But how do you know where you're going? Well, the Emperor is there putting a nice little navigator right there. He helps navigate you to know where you're going. If you want to go from Earth to some crazy solar system across the way, you need to go through that warp and then you need to know where you're going, go through there and pop your way out. It's like uh, doing nether travel in, in Minecraft so you can shorten the distance between going to areas. So long as the emperor is alive and being fed a thousand people a day to stay alive, you can do that. The moment he dies, interstellar travel's gone for all of humanity. You're so boned. Now, since the Horus Heresy 10,000 mm. years ago, the Imperium has fallen from grace substantially. All technology has started to dwindle and die. There is now giant fundamental religious extremists that now believe the Emperor of Mankind was a deity, a true living god which is probably the last thing the Emperor would have wanted to be remembered for. So now you have this thing called the Ecclesiarchy, which is this giant church entirely devoted to spread Okay, he is skipping over a lot of ages. Now the Ecclesiarchy, the reason I paused it right there is because he didn't explain who created that whole thing. And that was one of his Primarch's sons. I'm not gonna name him. I'm gonna see if he gets to it at any time during these videos. ...the good word of the Emperor. He is now the Holy Emperor God, the God Emperor of mankind and all of the Imperium has taken up worshiping him to the fullest extent and killing anything that isn't humanity in his name. The Imperium has this futuristic gothic tone to it and a hefty religious zealotry to them. If you think anything against the Emperor, that's heresy and you deserve to die. That is called being a heretic. Heretics die in 40k. There is no such thing as freedom of religion. There is no such thing as freedom of speech, so long as you are against the emperor. There is no such thing as any kind of tolerance. Everyone is a religious zealot. Some more than others, but no matter what, you're preaching that good word. So right now, everyone in humanity is trying to expand their empire across the stars if you are a heretic someone who doesn't believe in the emperor you are deserving of death if you believe in the chaos gods you are also a heretic and you deserve death if you are an alien race of any kind you are a filthy xenos and you deserve death as well so long as the murder continues and humanity expands the imperium of man is very very happy However, the largest fighting force of this Imperium is my personal favorite faction, and the first faction we will discuss, the Astra Militarum, or also known as the Imperial Guard. Pretty shit now, man! You finished. That's it, man. Game over, man! The Imperial Guard is the main fighting force of the Imperium, and in a world of horrifying creatures, galactic monstrosities, the literal demons themselves breaking through the fabric of time to kill you, the Imperial Guard are untold billions of regular men and women wearing modern day like flak armor with a laser rifle. This is the humble las gun, the main weapon of the Imperial Guard. It fires superheated plasma lasers at an extremely fast fire rate. It is reliable, never jams. It can blow off limbs, giant holes in concrete. It is overall an extremely devastating weapon in modern day. If you would like to learn more about weaponry of the Imperium, I suggest you pick up the Imperial Infantryman's Handbook. In this book, you will learn things like which knives you can use, what prayers to say before going into battle, what prayers to say before you get filleted, what grenades to use in certain situations, how many rounds a last gun holds, and so much more. Back to you, Bricky. All right. It is one of the weakest in the 40K universe. Yeah, a, a laser rifle that never jams, it could blow off limbs, one of the weakest weapons. That's the world we're in right now. But who cares? Because the Imperial Guard has, in each battle, 500,000 
of these men and women. 30,000 large armored tanks, 10,000 artillery batteries. The Imperial Guard wins through sheer numbers and firepower. They kind of have this World War I, World War II style aesthetic with legions of guardsmen as well as high company commanders and generals on the field along with them and multiple kinds of troops. A normal Imperial Guard battle starts off with artillery, long lines of artillery cracking the crust of the planet underneath the enemy's feet. And as this barrage continues, hundreds of thousands of guardsmen, sea, a sea of guardsmen, surges forward, firing and charging at everything possible while the planet rumbles as tanks roll up behind them. Gunships block out the sun and tanks block out the dirt with the steps and hoof prints of millions of guardsmen. It is through numbers and sheer sundering firepower. They are the first and last line of defense for the Imperium and make up a huge bulk of the battles. The Imperial Guard is also made up of tons of different kinds of regiments. The Katachin jungle fighters live in a death world that's more hospitable than almost any firefight they'll ever get into. So they just have this steroid looking giant knife Rambo predator looking sons of bitches where nothing is anywhere near as scary as a simple knight on their home planet. It. You have the Valhallen Winter Soldiers who haven't felt their toes in 300 years, the Mordian Iron Guard who are more interested in making their shoes shine than actually fighting a battle, and then of course the big one, the Cadians from Cadia. <coughs> the biggest export of guardsmen <laughs> in the entirety of the Imperium. You will fire your first gun at five. You will disassemble and reassemble it at 10. You will have pounding artillery drills day in and day out at 15. And you'll fight your first swarm lord at 16. And if you mention Kadia, you will burst into an unrelenting amount of tears and sadness like I do daily. To quote, I have at my command an entire battle group of the Imperial Guard, 50 regiments including specialized drop troops, stealthers, mechanized formations, armored companies, combat engineers, and mobile artillery. Over half a million fighting men and 30,000 tanks and artillery pieces are mine to command. Emperor, show mercy to the fool that stands against me, for I shall not. The Imperial Guard are my personal favorite faction in 40k. They're the army I collect the most, the ones I enjoy playing the most, and the one I enjoy in the lore sense a lot. There's something about just a regular man with a laser rifle being told to charge the horrors of this universe and willingly doing so for his god emperor. It's just poetic. They actually represent the main Imperial Guard tactics pretty well. Large amounts of artillery that doesn't require a line of sight, lots of tanks, tons of infantry, drop troops, and gunships. Overall, they're pretty similar to how they sound, though a little bit expensive to collect, unfortunately. And they don't hit a lot. They have a bit of a bad aim, but you don't really care because you're just drowning them in shots. However, if you want more accurate fire and specialization, we can move on to talk about Spetsmarines. The Angels of Death are up next. Space Marines are genetically engineered super soldiers and superhumans. They're given extra organs. All right, y'all. Before we get into the big guys, the Space Marines, um, I'm going to end this video here. So we're going to split it up into, I believe, three chunks for this one since it's about an hour anyway. This video, if I edit it down properly, should be less than 20 minutes, um, making this a three-parter. Anyway, I'm still continuing the Emperor's text to speech and if you have any other recommendations for any other videos that I can start a series on or individual video projects, please leave your suggestions in the comment. Anyway, see you in the next video. I'm Ken and this is Kinetic Reactions. Peace. My ass must taste of ground beef and rainbows if it is that delicious because It seems like there is a biochemical basis for at least the way people identify, demonstrate, magnetize to an imaginary category. Uh, something that we need to examine a lot more closely. You need help.